this psalm, Psalm 23, probably the most popular psalm in the Bible, certainly the most quoted psalm in the Bible, and, and quite likely the most quoted passage in all of Scripture, Psalm 23. Even non-believers use Psalm 23 when they have funerals. You hear it all the time. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Psalm 23 has been called the Pearl of the Psalms, a nightingale singing in the world's night of loneliness and need. And the thing that amazes me is that Psalm 23 was penned over 3,000 years ago. Think of that. Over 3,000 years ago, David penned this psalm, and yet it is as fresh and as relevant and as comforting as it was the day that David penned these marvelous words. And I love the imagery that the psalmist uses, that David uses, because he himself was a shepherd. And he says, the Lord is my shepherd. And, and then Jesus picks up the same picture, picks up the same imagery in the scriptures when he says this. Look at what he said in John chapter 10. He said, I am the good shepherd, and my sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, and no one can snatch them out of my hand. The Bible says nothing can ever separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. He says no one can ever separate them, can ever snatch them out of my hand. And Jesus, our good shepherd, also restores our souls. Look at what he said in Matthew chapter 11. He said, come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest. You'll find rest for your souls. Anybody here today need rest for your soul? Yeah? He says, come to me, you who are weary and burdened. Let me ask you something. What are you weary of? What are you burdened with? When you follow the shepherd, he leads you in the right path the path that he wants you to take. He says, I will lead you in the righteous path. I will lead you in the path that is best for you, the path that I have marked out for you, the path that is good, pleasing, and perfect just for you. He says, if you follow me, I will lead you down that path. But be aware that sometimes that path, the righteous path, sometimes that path does lead straight into the valley of the shadow of death. David says, as I follow the shepherd, he says this. Look again in verse 4. He says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because you're with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. He doesn't say, even if I should possibly, maybe somehow stumble into the valley of the shadow of death. He says, even though, because it is inevitable. It's inevitable. When you're following the shepherd, sometimes that's where he leads. But he leads us there because there's something he wants to teach us. There's something he wants to actually restore in our lives. And we don't have to be afraid when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. We don't have to be afraid because the shepherd is with us. David says, even though I walk through that valley, he says, you're with me. Notice how in the beginning of the psalm, he's talking about God. The Lord is my shepherd. But now when he gets into the, the time of darkness and distress, he's talking directly to the Lord. He says, I don't have to be afraid because you're with me. And you're the one who comforts me. You see, your shepherd is not waiting for you on the other side of your trouble. I don't know what kind of trouble you're in. 
I asked you a moment ago if you're burdened with something, if you're weary with something. Maybe you are facing the valley of the shadow of death. The shepherd is not waiting for you on the other side. Will you try to figure it out and find your way through? He says, you're with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. I love the word comfort in the Old Testament. The word comfort in the Old Testament means he sighs with your sighing. There's an old English word. It's he compassionates. He compassionates with you. He enters into your pain, not just to feel sorry for you. He enters into our pain to restore us, to strengthen us, to lead us through. He makes a way in the darkness. He guides us. He protects us when we're in the darkness. And he guides and protects us with his presence and with his power, comforting us, entering into our pain, compassionating with us. He says, even in the valley of the shadow of death, there is a righteous path. That's the hardest time to stay on that path because that's when you want to panic, that's when you want to question, that's when you want to doubt. But there's a righteous path even when you go through dark valleys and frightening, fearful times because I'm following the shepherd. And the shepherd says, I'm with you. Whatever it is you're facing, follow me and we'll get through this together. Our good shepherd provides, he protects, he comforts, he leads us, he feeds us, he renews us, he restores us, he gives us our life back, he gives us room to breathe. And Jesus says again to us, he says, I'm the good shepherd, so come to me. Come to me if you're weary and burdened, and I'll restore your soul. I will give you rest. And let me ask you in your moment of prayer, what are you carrying with you today? What are you worried about? What's weighing on you? Take a moment and tell the Lord about it. Just tell him what it is. Tell him the details. Uh, all I want you to understand today is that as a child of God, it doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter how many ill winds are blowing in your life. You have the promise of God that you are never alone. Now that Promise doesn't mean very much when it comes from human lips. But when you have the promise from the Lord, you have to remember what uh, Balaam says there in Numbers. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Because if God said it, he is going to bring it to pass. It doesn't matter how hopeless it seems, how impossible it seems, God cannot lie. And it doesn't matter what you are in. This is a day when it seems as though everybody uh, takes the position as though, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, cast aside and what I'm going through I'm going through it by myself and nobody cares and and, and uh, so many folk today they're living frustrated lives rich folk that are lonely the young folk who have hardly gotten started in life and yet they feel pressures upon them and that pressures cause them to believe that nobody knows and nobody cares but I'm here to tell you that it does not matter what you are in what you are going through no matter how many human ears have been closed how many human backs have been turned whatever you are going through if you belong to him I just wish you tell somebody no 
you are never alone. And walking through the valley of the shadow of death. He said, yet I will fear no evil, for you are with me. You've heard that beautiful little story of the footprints. How that a person, when they got to heaven, the Lord let them look back upon their life, the footprints of their life and the experiences that they went through. And they noted that there was double footprints, two sets, through all of those great and glorious times. But there were those places in the path of life where there were only a single set of footprints. Those difficult times, those, those extremely hazardous times, there was only a single set of footprints. And they said, Lord, how is it that you were walking with me all through the good, the happy, the successful times, but when the chips were really down, it looks like you deserted me because there's only one set of footprints. And the Lord responded, there was only one set of footprints because they are mine and in those difficult places I carried you through. When we come to the valley of the shadow of death, I think that's one of those places in life where when you look back you'll only see a single set of footprints as the Lord picks us up to carry us through. And so David concludes, for the Lord is my shepherd, as my guide, and as my host. Certainly, goodness and mercy are going to follow me all the days of my life. I mean, here they are like a couple of hound dogs at my heels. Goodness and mercy, everywhere I go, God's goodness, God's mercy following me all the days of my life but what then when the days of my life have come to an end when God says it is finished what then I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever God becomes my eternal host. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. In the glorious light of His presence. No wonder the 23rd Psalm has become the most popular passage of Scripture in the Bible has brought comfort and strength and hope to so many millions of people because it is so wonderful to know God as a shepherd, as a guide, and as my eternal host. If you don't know God in that capacity, I feel sorry for you.